Get over to the Penguin Club and interview Prince Ellis. He's leaving for Hollywood tomorrow with a picture contract. Yeah. Now some of the chicks might go back to their boyfriends. Oh, say, boss, do I have to do this kind of stuff? You get a story out of Prince Ellis and make it good. Get going before I fire you again. Okay, okay, save it for tomorrow. Well, make it snappy or you're fired. Well, are you still with us? I'm disgraced. What's the matter? It's disgusting. Interview a trumpet player, of all things. Can't stand to hear another fellow blow his heart, eh? How would you like to hear that big bag of wind Prince Ellis screeching in your ears all night? I'd love it. When do we go? Say, that's a great idea. It'll break the monotony. You're going along. Can I count on your company? You've got to have somebody help you spend Uncle's money, and it might as well be me. It's a killer, sweetheart. In front of your house at 10. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Prince Ellis and his trumpet are saying goodbye to you from the Penguin Club. But the merry maestro will not be away from us for long. Soon, he'll be playing for you from the silver screen in Hollywood. But now, in his own familiar fashion, he's going to play his farewell selection. Yeah. Are you carrying a torch for that nightclub, Romeo? Don't be silly. Oh, I was only kidding. I didn't think my little sister would fall for his type. Why, that guy has a heart like a hotel. Room for everybody. Don't talk like that about Prince. He's not that way at all. What's this? You don't mean... No. I can't believe it. That must be dead. Hello, children. Hello, Jack. You stayed late at the office. Yes, I had a lot of work to do. Oh, that's one of our new arrangements Prince Ellis is playing. I've been listening to it. Dear, it's swell. Dad, our Prince's new arrangement's all finished. Now, that's what delayed me at the office. May I take them to him? No, I'm going to the club myself tonight. I'll take them. When did you get this made? Last night. Honey, he's not the kind of a man for you. You're just another girl to him. But this is different, Dad. That's right, sis. When a pretty girl comes along, he'll forget all about you. Dad, this is serious. What can we do? We've got to do something about it. But what? She's crazy about it. I know, but I'll find some way to stop it. That's a boyfriend. Good night, Dad. Try to reason with me. I do hate to see you work. With all my love, Prince, you heal. Prince Ellis resident, begin speaking. And this is Mrs. Prince Ellis's residence. When that double-crossing husband of mine gets home, tell him I said he'd better call me if he knows what's good for him. Trouble? I hear you coming. service. I heard all about you uh, for that all of that money. you got everything. The gas. We'll just sit at the bar. With your money, you can get any place you like. Say, bartender, come over here and punch up this space and give this man plenty of service. What you take, I'll take the same. <laughs> <laughs> Old champ, always jiving. Well, Scotch and soda be all right, darling? Make it too, Sammy. Look 
with Maxine. She doesn't seem so gay tonight. Maybe it's because Prince Ellis is leaving. If I'm not mistaken, the great Prince Ellis has been giving Maxine an awful run around lately. Say, weren't Maxine and Chet Wallace pretty thick at one time? Yes. As a matter of fact, Chet got her this job. Oh, yeah? Get along all right. Kill her, champ. I'll be back for that drink. <laughs> Still jiving. And so we come to the end of Prince Ellis's farewell from, from the Penguin Club. Won't you take over, Prince? Thanks, folks, for lending me your ears. I'll be playing for you from Hollywood soon. Until then, so long. We're saying good night now from the Penguin Club. Your announcer is Chet Wallace. This is the United Broadcasting System. <laughs> Get your interview now. That can wait. I'm going to get some of the trimmings first. Hello, Maxine. Well, if it isn't Shakespeare. I guess they'll be needing a new star after the show tonight. That's right. Looks like they'll be needing a new singer, too. Maybe. Was that about a new singer? Oh, hello, Chad. Hello, Bill. Am I intruding? Not at all. We were just planning a party. A nice, long party. You're in, Linda. I'm in favor of it. Count me in. Swell! Rack them up, Sammy. Solid, John. Don't forget to keep up the supply. Expect to need plenty of them. You got your last number from me. We've quit doing business. Say, what's eating you? I asked you to stay away from May, but you kept right on seeing her. But, John, you know my intentions. I know exactly what your intentions are. But I warn you, you'd better leave town alone, or you won't leave town at all. I'm reminding you of that interview. Well, wait. Sally, go on. But you got the interview, Prince Ellis. Good old Prince. He's a wonderful guy. I love Prince. And Prince loves me. Everybody loves Prince. He's my best friend. Prince is everybody's friend. But Biff, when are you going to see him? Here he comes now. Say, Prince, how about an interview? See me tomorrow. Gotta have it tonight. We're going to press and you're leaving town tomorrow. But I'm too busy. Oh, I remember when you used to be glad to have me put your name in the newspaper. It's different now. I'm going to Hollywood and don't need your rag. So, it's gone to your head. I knew you couldn't take it. Why, you little news boy. Think of that, you. Please go, champ. They'll always win, but out you go. Didn't call your brother. Prepare a nice luncheon for two. One's enough for head mine. Who's thinking of you? I have a business appointment. What's her name? Get out of here. Oh, I get it. Prince in his head, a little lamb, a little lamb, a little lamb. Prince in his head, a little lamb. And there she is. Won't you come in? Company for you, Prince. Hello, May. 
I've been waiting. Lunch will be served shortly. Won't you sit down? Darling, you look very lovely today. Thank you. I think it's wonderful that you're going to Hollywood. I wish I could go. I'm a surprise for you. I'm going to send for you the minute I get there. Oh, really, Prince? But what's Dad going to say? Well, in a few days, my divorce will be final. We can be married, so what can he say? But he'd do anything to stop us. Do you really think it's all right, Prince? Prince? Of course it is. When he hears we're going to be married... Buck, see who it is. Come with me. All right. All right. Where's Prince? Oh, uh, Prince? Yes, Prince. Where is he? Now, that's a funny thing. And what's so funny about that? People are always asking me, where's Prince? Well, come on, come on. Where is he? Just wait here and I'll tell him where you is. A uh, Prince? Prince? Who is it, Bob? I forgot to tell you your wife called up. Now she done called around. Oh, hello, Cleo. You're looking mighty sweet today. Don't jive me. Hmm. Luncheon for two. Company? Oh, uh, no. Just Buck and I. Don't kid me, Prince. So, you're leaving town. Yes, selling out. And what about me? You? Yes, me, my dough, alimony. Oh, everything is kicking. And how do I know that? I'm telling you. Do you suppose I'd take your word for it? You told me you weren't leaving town till next week. You're leaving today. Wild argument. You'll get your dough. I know what you're thinking. But you'll never live to see the day you can do that to me. I'm warning you, you'd better not try it. And that's final. May, I was told I'd find you here. What did I say to you last night? I warned you to stay away from my daughter. But, Dad, I came here of my own will. Wait for me outside. You'd better go, honey. I thought I made myself clear last night. You're taking the wrong attitude, John. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'll see you dead before anything happens to my daughter. Prince? Have you finished packing? Sure, I finished packing. Boy, with all these angry people coming in here, we should have been gone long ago. You're telling me. I'll carry this myself. This is my real honey. She doesn't talk back. Or collect alimony. Or threaten to kill me. Or spend your money. And she leads me to fame and fortune. And don't forget about Hollywood. Why, you and Meg Carroll, aren't you? Yes. Well, what are you doing here? I came to see Mr. Ellis. I'm beginning to understand things. What do you mean by that? Can't a girl come to see her boyfriend without everybody butting in? Listen, youngster, let me tell you something. You're just wasting words, Miss Ray. You'll never turn me against Prince. Why, you little fool. If you weren't such a kid, I'd slap your face. <laughs> Hello, man. I'm glad you're here. Maybe I'd better get those tickets. Make yourself at home. Seems as though a lot of people do that around here. Like to hear a new number? If you want to stall a while, go ahead.
mind answering the phone for me, honey? Not at all. Hello? 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 Listen, Beth, I was only trying to protect you in case you didn't want to see Prince after last night. You wouldn't kid a fellow, would you? Pal? Well, let's interview him together. Well. Hi, Maxine. Maxine Ray, the singer from the Penguin Club. Now, see here, wise guy, if you'll give me another one of your fairy tales, I... Yeah. All right, but you'd better be on the level this time. Sergeant! Sergeant! All right, I'm going home right now. I'm going right home. Forget about home. Come in here. A murder's been committed. A murder? Who done it? That's what you're going to tell me. Send out a call to pick up Maxine Ray, the singer, and bring her to Prince Ellis' apartment to hide it. All right, All right, boy. All right, Captain. All right. Forget what you saw, or you are next. Mm, nice little play toy, isn't it? Wonder who that was meant for. Maxine Ray, or I miss my guess. Maybe. Come on in, miss. Don't be afraid. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. Here she is, Captain. Nice work, Sergeant. You'd better stick around. Won't you sit down, miss? I'd like to ask you a few questions. You were seen leaving this apartment about the time of the murder. I came to see Prince. He was going away today. So you made sure he wouldn't leave. I didn't do it. Then why are you so scared? Who are you? I'm from Doc. What do you know about this? I don't know nothing. He was all right when I left to get his airplane ticket. See? I'm telling you the truth. The lady can tell you it's true. She came in while I was going out. All right, Slim. Take him out there and question him. Come on, you. Suppose we start over. I, I was over there at the telephone. Prince was playing his trumpet and suddenly the music stopped. I looked and he was falling to the floor with a... I saw the door closing. But I couldn't see anyone. I got frightened after that and ran away. You'll have to do better than that, miss. It's the truth. I swear it's the truth. Come on back. We got to tell that to the captain. Captain, this dude said Prince had more visitors today. Out with it, Sergeant. Prince's wife was here. John Cal, the music publisher, was here. And John Cal's daughter. And both the wife and Cal threatened Prince's life. It's all right, Sergeant. But for the time being, we'll have to book you on suspicion of murder. I didn't do it. I didn't kill Prince. Beth. Don't worry, Linda. We'll find out who did it. But me and Father, it's terrible. The first thing we'll do is have a talk with Maxine down at headquarters. That's all I know. You know more than you told the captain, Maxine. Why don't you tell us? I've nothing more to say. But you're in danger. For your own safety, you should... I can't talk. Beth's your friend, Maxine. Why don't you let him help you? If you're my friend, get me out of here. But if you're... This is the safest place you could be. There's something I must do. If I get out of day, meet me at the Penguin Club. About your time. And you learn plenty. I'll try. Linda, stay here with Maxine. I'm going in and see Captain Hall. 
Open up, Joe. All right, Mr. Boyd. Yes, bad news, Captain. What is it now? I've got an angle on this case, Captain Hall. Well, let's have it. Maxine Ray isn't guilty, but she knows more about this murder than she's telling. She'll never spill anything while she's in here. You think if I release her, she'll talk, eh? Exactly. Put her in the clear and she'll open up. But throw a guard around her, Captain. She's in danger every minute of her life. I'll take a chance on that, Biff. You won't be missing out. Captain, let me solve this case. Now that's stupid. Will you keep quiet? Make out papers for Maxine Ray's release. Then watch every move she makes. I'm going to give you one more chance, Bill. And if you fail me this time, I'm absolutely through with you. I don't want anything. Maxine Ray. Maxine Ray. That's all you get is Maxine Ray. I still think that Stooge did it. Yes, sir, I'm going to bring him in. Uh, John. John. This is Sergeant Slim. Now listen, John. Here's what I want you to do. Your brother. Okay, okay. Ain't no harm in us playing a little rummy while waiting for, for something to happen, is there? Rummy? Got any change? Has a duck got a bill? I'm talking about spinning change. Brother, sit down. Yes, sir. I'm gonna like it here. <clears throat> <laughs> that kind of luck ain't human. I ain't got nothing else left to play for. I wonder how you got a rid of Haber's corpus. I told you you didn't have no business bringing me here. Well, as much as I hated this, pay that you out. I expected to get out. Open them up. What's this? Went upstairs. I started back. That's all. You may go now. But. There you are, Captain. It's the old man, all right. But he's clever, Phipps. Plenty clever. We haven't got enough on him yet. And then they let me go. Oh, Linda, it was terrible. Are you sure you told them that your father didn't leave the building after seeing Prince? I didn't tell them. They forced it out of me. Phipps, what can we do? Oh, if your father only had Listen. Maxine said she'd tell us what she knows of the Penguin Club tonight, remember? Yes, that's right. I'll see to it that the police are there. Linda, you've got to bring your dad. Maxine will clear him if he's innocent. Yes? Who is this? This is Biff Boyd of the world. Are you interested in knowing who killed Prince Alice? Of course I am. I see. I'll be at the Penguin Club. Are you interested in knowing who killed Prince Alice? Then be at the Penguin around Joe time. Sure now? Well, I'll be there at that Penguin Club, mister. Are you interested in knowing who killed Prince Alice? Are we? Why, you tell him, Sarge. Why, listen, you nosy, newsy nuisance. We don't want any of your information. We know who poisoned Prince Alice. Will you shut up? You told me to talk to him. Poison? Poison? Yes, yeah, snake venom. And that blubber mouth had to let it out. The autopsy showed that he was loaded with it. Then the knife didn't kill him. Not according to Doc Robbins. But we're not certain yet how it was given to him. Listen, Captain, this is important. I'm supposed to be making me something. I've arranged to have all the people involved there. Well, you've taken a lot on yourself, Biff. Well, I have more than a reporter's interest in this case. I understand. Thanks. 
Why not drop in at the club yourself tonight? Maybe I will, Biff. But if this is a false alarm... Swing time at the Penguin Club, ladies and gentlemen. The songs you like best played the way you like by C.P. Johnson and his orchestra. Okay, C.P., swing it. Everybody dance. You seem nervous. Well, I'm all right. It's nothing. Nothing. You're still upset over Prince. Why shouldn't I be? With everything in this place reminding me of him. Oh, come on. Snap out of it. Everything's going to be all right, honey. Yes. Everything is going to be all right. I'll see you later. you to come in here that didn't go out? Fella. When you bowed to the lady, the band was playing four bars of music. Before the band stopped. Then stopped. Told you he knew about it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you that famous quartet, the Four Toppers. They're going to do for you one of their own original compositions. Jump, the water's fine. <laughs> The water's fine, and in the water with a plot for you can die. Did a bit of pop, have you, have you, have you, have you, Joe? The water's fine, sun is falling down, heat waves floating around, so don't think it's wet to be. Swimming hold is hard to beat. Jump, jump, swim, go to water, fine, won't let me jump. I'm right behind, have you, have you, have you, have you, Joe? The water's fine, Saturday, Saturday morning. Kind of warm, but little swimming, baby, would not do to no harm. I know just the place to have our place. The old swimming hole is just the thing. Don't just play one twice, fine. You jump first to the first in line. I'm at you. I'm I'm after you, John. The water's fine. You land in the water with a flop. Boy, you can't dive with the belly flop. We'll dive again. We dive again. We dive again. I dive again. John, the water's fine. Sun is falling down. Heat waves floating around. Set on the bank for the wet your feet. Well, it was hard to beat. Jump for a spring boat. The water's fine. Wooey! The water is a flop. I'm after you. I'm after you. I'm after you. I'm after you. John. Now gather around, children. Try to yeah. duck. Teach you how to swim. Like a duck. Now don't be scared. Contain the wind. You run up on the board and you dive right in. We won't swim. We'll dive high. Look out now. We're gonna try. Jump. Get a 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 j
Look out there. What's wrong? Swim in here. Don't swim out there. Don't the three little fishes had to take it on the land. So watch out, Sam. Stay away from that dam.
connected with the Pura's here tonight. Maxine knew who did it. She can't talk now. Sergeant, round up everybody connected with the Ellis case and book them for questioning. How slippers will do you from now on? Can I put them on now? I never saw who didn't know anything. Nobody admits to a thing. What do you want me to do, keep you all in jail? Each one of you here had a reason for hating Prince Ellis, and one of you did. One of you found out that Maxine Ray knew too much, and you killed her too, if it takes till doomsday. But, ladies and gentlemen, don't you really? You're free. But don't try to leave town. All right, hit the street. Beth, I'm going with Dad. Seat the office, Linda. Okay. Good morning. Well, who did it? Who did what? You know what we're waiting for. Clothes, important clothes. You won't find them here. Oh, yes, I will. Do you remember when they threw Buck Bedford in jail and he got out on a writ? Then I looked up where he came from, Chicago. So, go on. Well, I'm asking your permission to send a telegram to the Chicago Dispatch looking up all available information on Bedford. Okay. Regarding Buck Bedford, Orphan, resided in Chicago with sister who committed suicide about four years ago after unfortunate love affair with musician. Went to New York to live shortly after that. <whistles> Linda, this is terrific. Send a wire to Chicago and tell them to name that musician. this, Sergeant. Regarding Buck Bedford, name of musician Prince Ellis. Then he did do it, but this is the motive, and we let him go. Here's a lab report on the Ellis trumpet. Then you picked up the trumpet, Captain. Oh, yes, this morning. 
So, snake venom. Found on the mouthpiece of the victim's trumpet corresponds to the same poisoning found in his body. There was enough of it to kill him instantly. Phipps. Was Bradford still in the apartment this morning? Yeah. But it looked like he's getting ready to move out. You better get up there and pick him up right away. And this time, guard him yourself. It will be a pleasure. I think I'll go along, Sarge. That is, if you don't mind. Oh, that's all. Oh, oh, oh come on if you want to go. You're just going to follow me. Knocked out. Knocked himself out to make up an alibi. He hit himself on the head with what? How'd I know? I wouldn't, yeah. Get a doctor. This. This is Sergeant Slim. Call the police department for an ambulance. Right. Found, knocked out at. I don't care what you do with that newspaper of yours, but he is my prisoner. I'm going to stay with you myself this time. I swear I didn't see who hit me. I came into the room and suddenly everything went black. And when I woke up, you were there. You know, I think you did it. You're going to have a lot of time for thinking. Hey, Sarge. Let's mean you play a little rummy to pass the time away. No! Oh, uh, Johnny. Have Detective Phipps stand by with the car tonight. Yes, we're going to give the Ellis apartment the once over again to see if we can pick up any more evidence. Yeah. Yeah, about 10 o'clock. Wait a minute. Oh, uh... With Prince's man in the jug, that apartment is going to be wide open tonight. Nice time for a bit of snooping. And what do you expect to find? I wouldn't be surprised if the murderer might not be searching for that trumpet. But you said the police had it. But the guilty one doesn't know that. Oh, that's right. It's my deal, ain't it? And you better make it good if you know what's good for you. You the unluckiest man I ever saw.
Thanks, Phipps. Boys! Linda! Oh, it's you! Why do you have to come here for an argument? I guess we're all here for the same reason, Captain. Where did that shot come from? Didn't you fire it? No. I didn't. I haven't got a gun. Well, what are we standing here for? It was the murderer. We'd better give the place a once over, Phipps. What is it, Captain? This is a John Carroll song sheet. It's dated the 18th. That's today. Okayed by John Carroll. The one who fired the shot must have dropped it. Well, it certainly couldn't have flown in, Miss Carroll. You don't think it was... It wasn't. Phil, it couldn't have been. We'd better get back to headquarters, Phil. Sergeant, bring Bedford into my office. I didn't love him. It was hero worship. But you hated him for it, didn't you? Yes. So to break it up, you killed him. I hated him enough. But I didn't kill him. Come on, Mr. Carroll. Why don't you make it easy on yourself? We know you only try to protect your daughter. Why don't you confess? And we can help you. You were heard quarreling with Prince Alice at the Penguin Club the night before the murder. Why? I broke off doing business with him. Did you threaten him? I told him he'd better leave town alone. That's all. But you did threaten to kill him the next day if you found your daughter in his apartment. I warned him again. Bump Bedford overheard you. You left the apartment, but you didn't leave the building. You waited your chance, and then you... What are you trying to do? Calm down, Mr. Carroll. We're only trying to help you. And when you discovered that Maxine Ray had found you out, you killed her, too. I had nothing against Maxine Ray. Nothing at all. Earlier tonight, you broke into Prince Ellis' apartment. You were almost discovered by Biff and Linda. You took a shot at Biff. What's the matter, Carroll? Does he know too much? I haven't been near Ellis' apartment since that day. But no one seems able to explain your sudden disappearance last night. Can you? I had to go to Fairfield to see my printer. On the way, my car broke down and I couldn't find the garage. I just about succeeded in fixing it myself. and Your man picked me up. Have you ever seen this before? Yes. It's a piece of music I okayed. Then how did it get into Prince Ellis' apartment last night? I don't know. Unless somebody put it there to put suspicion on me. We've heard that one before, Mr. Carroll. Sorry, but your alibis won't stand up. We've got enough, Phipps. Hold it. What happened, Captain? He hasn't got a chance. Do you mean he confessed? No, we didn't get him to admit it. But it's an open and shut case. I'm asking the district attorney to indict John Carroll for murder in the first degree. Get me the DA's office. Give me a break, Captain. You've got to help me. Well, what is it now? I don't think Carroll is guilty, and I'm asking for time to prove it. I know you're trying to help your girl's father, Biff. And probably I do the same thing. But then keep this thing away from the DA and out of the newspapers until I've had my chance. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do this. Cancel that call to the DA's office. I'll give you 48 hours. Thanks, Captain. You've stayed away from the office for days without even calling me. 
And when you do come in, you don't bring any news. And worst of all, you're withholding something. You let the paper down, which is something I can't excuse. Turn in your press badge, boy. You're through. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Bailey. Thanks, just the same. You didn't. No, I didn't tell him. They're futile. But what did Bailey say? He fired me. For keeps this time. Made me turn in my card. Oh, because of me. I'm sorry. You don't think I'd have done anything else, do you? Well, we can't worry about that now. We've got to do something and do it quick. But what? You've got me. If only they could find Buck Bedford. He must be the one. That's why he broke jail. I hope they don't catch him. If they do, he'll be a material witness against your father. Bev, you don't think father. I don't know. Hi, Bill. Hello, Chet. Am I interrupting? No, not at all. I was just going to see Dad. Oh, by the way, Linda, how is your father? He's fine, thanks. Oh, that's good. We'll see you later. Rag up a chair, Chet. What's on your mind? Say, Bill, do you think that they'll ever find Maxine's murderer? I think so. They've got to. I'll never rest until they do. You know how I felt about her. Yes, I know, Chet. Biff, maybe I shouldn't say this, but who's going to profit most by Prince's death? Well, I don't know, unless... Do you mean Cleo? If Prince had lived, he'd have cut her off completely. What about Maxine's death? Well, Cleo was at the club that night. I don't know whether you realize it or not. But the way Maxine was acting, uh, she seemed frightened. She must have known something. Yes, I know she did. Maybe Cleo found out that Prince was going to cut her off in a new will. There are angles like that, you know. Oh, uh, well. Why, <laughs> sure. Of course. I never thought of that. Well, Biff, you know how I feel about this thing. If anything develops, let me know, will you? Why, sure, Chet. Glad you dropped around. It's okay, Biff. I'll be seeing you. So long. So long. Oh, well. Homicide. Captain Hall, please. Hello, Captain. Biff Boyd. Listen, Captain, this is important. You remember you promised not to let me down. All right. Have Prince Ellis's lawyer in your office at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Prince Ellis' lawyer? Well, what do you want him for? We'll break this case wide open. Well, all right, 4 o'clock this afternoon in my office. Mr. Jones. Did Prince Ellis leave a will? No, not to my knowledge. Although he spoke of making one. My plan depends upon drawing up a fake will. Impossible. I wouldn't consent to it. But where does the fake will come in? It's the only way to trick a confession from the killer. Prince was poisoned by that trumpet. But the murderer doesn't know that the police have discovered that. The trumpet is the one piece of evidence that the guilty one must get possession of. And we must make it easy to get. It's a serious thing, Boyd. Unless I have the approval of the district attorney. Captain Hall can arrange that, I'm sure. All right. I'm agreeable, if a will can do it. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Now I'll tell you exactly what the fake will must contain. Run away, will you? Well, get this. Your legs may be long, 
But the arms of the law is long. I wasn't trying to run away. You didn't act like it. But anyway, here's an invitation for you from the captain. The captain? You heard me. Mm, mm, mm. And I had enough trouble already. Buck Bedford, Esquire. You have been mentioned in a will left by the late Prince Ellis. It has been designated that you appear at his last place of residence at 12 o'clock midnight. As you know, we're assembled here at the hour of midnight in accordance with the wish expressed in the will by the late Prince Ellis. He wanted his will read to you, his beneficiaries, in this manner and at this time. I, Prince Ellis, being of sound mind, do hereby dispose of my worldly goods as follows to wit. First, the foreign persons are to be called together at my home one month after my demise. Cleo Ellis, my wife. Buck Bedford, my buddy. Maxine Ray, my beloved protege. John Carroll, to whom to labor I'm deeply indebted. May Carroll a beautiful inspiration. Chet Wallace, my friend. Second, as the names are written above, they are to select from my personal or household belongings the object or article each one desires most to possess. According to the wish expressed in this document, we may now proceed. Before reading further, Cleo Ellis, you may make the first choice. I would like this clock. It was Prince's wedding gift to me. Doug Bedford, make your selection. What I want is here. I would like to have this picture. It's the only one left of my sister. You see, she's... she's dead. It is destined that Maxine Ray would not be at this gathering, so I now call upon John Carroll. It was only while he was alive that Prince Ellis could have given me what I wanted. Now that he's dead, someone else has taken it. I only wanted his life. My daughter wishes nothing from the estate of Prince Ellis. Chet Wallace may now make his selection. Prince called me his friend. There's only one of his articles that I would like to have as a keepsake. The thing that was his most cherished possession. His trumpet. Chet, you and Prince started out together playing trumpet in the same band. I wonder if you'd mind playing one of his favorite selections for us. Can't, can you? No. No, I can't. Not because of Prince. What do you mean? Because you know there's poison on that mouthpiece. Poison that killed Prince Ellis. You selected that trumpet because you wanted to destroy all the evidence forever. So you found out. Yes. Yes, it's true. I killed him. I killed him because he deserved to die. Maxine saw it when it happened. I warned her, but she was going to expose me anyway. Poor Maxine. If only... If only she could have loved me. Out of the way, copper. Or she'll die too. Open the door. Now, if anybody makes a move. 
wolf, I'll shoot. You see, one more doesn't make any difference now. Thanks, Slim. <laughs> Folks, I'd like to propose a toast. For the past few weeks, nearly every one of us in this party here has had pretty tough going. But now everything's cleared up, we're all happy again. But there's one man who we all owe a debt of gratitude. On behalf of the police department, I wish to thank him for the part he has played in solving a terrible crime and thereby saving a lot of innocent people from judgment. Let's drink to Biff Boyd. Here's the beer. Well, I mean, thanks a lot, Captain. Yes, sir, he's a mighty fine boy. Yes, he certainly is. But you know, you are very wonderful too, Slim. Oh, I beg your pardon, I'm Red Lieutenant. Oh, that's all right. Just call me Slim. Oh, that's Slim. I decided that a girl's place is at home. Oh, I see. You want to give the orders. Any time you say, Mrs. Biff Boyd. Biff. Uh-oh, there goes another good man. <laughs> well, CP, I think we've got another hit with that new tune of yours. You like it? How about singing a chorus for us? Well, I'd be glad to. Now, won't you swing it lightly, girls? Won't you swing it right, lady? Come on with me and jive with me. Won't you swing it lightly? Now when the band is stop to play, then everybody wants to sway. Come on and swing it like deep. Well, no, that, 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 a little left there. When the cat is jumping and the crowd all gathers round, some cat will holler out, I'm just chugging down. Now all you cats swing our beat. Come on, you cats and get this deep. Well, no, that, that, that. Be a little letter to the but... Yes, Miss Carol. There's something I want you to do for me. I'd be back to. Would you autograph this, please? Why, sure. Isn't he wonderful? What? Oh, but Dad, he's different. Oh, no, he's <laughs> 